Welcome back to another TS Terra Plays Terra video. So today's video, we are going to be going over the Kaya's Brooch. Now, a lot of people already might have it that are in the end game scene. I've had mine for quite some time. And yeah, today I want to take the time to go over the three different types of Kaya's Brooches, along with the ways to grind your brooch if you do not have it. Or maybe you just want another brooch, because as I said, there's three types. And maybe you want to know how other people grind this brooch. Within that, I have mentioned that a lot of us already have it at the endgame level. So this is for more new players or intermediate advanced players that might not have their brooch just yet. Maybe they're confused which one to pick. And as I said, this video has been delayed. I did have plans to release a video with Rita. It was actually Rita's idea. He wanted to do a cool collaboration with both of us talking about the brooch as he was getting it because he was the first person on the server to get the brooch, at least on the NA side. I can't speak for, you know, EU who got it first, but definitely I'm pretty sure Brita got the first on NA, which is super cool. And I am slightly bummed that I couldn't do the collab. That was the week I was super busy with DJing weddings and just doing live sound events. I Y'all probably noticed that there wasn't much content at all going on um, from me, and I do apologize. You know, work gets in the way sometimes, but within that, don't worry. Rita and me have been talking about doing a really cool collaboration very soon. I'm actually doing it with quite a few players, and that release will be soon. But within that, um, like I said, this video, I'm going to be going over the Kai's Brooch, different ways to get it. One of the ways I will be covering is actually how Rita did get his and what him and I were talking about, as well as, you know, he talked about it in his video. So if you're not subscribed to Rita and you're watching me and you haven't, you know, seen anything of his content, definitely go in the description of this video. His whole channel will be linked. Um, he's such a cool guy. He's very nice. He's very sweet. He's a really good Reaper now back in the day i remember he did little things differently but now he's he's pretty really really grown and i'm really proud of running with rita and you know i'm excited for the future to come so within that like i said definitely go check rita out super super cool dude are you a console gamer do you just love your controller that you just so much can't live without your joysticks or maybe the buttons or just the way it feels in your hand i know i am i know for a solid few months i was trying to get used to a good old uh keyboard and mouse and i just couldn't do it i was trying to play games like Terra, final fantasy 14 and it just wasn't doing it for me but let me tell you you can get a program called rewasd right now that gives you full keyboard and mouse support while using your controller yes this program allows you to map everything on your controller to your keyboard and mouse so games like dota or other games similar that have a somewhat controller support even terra pc has some support but it's not very good you'll get full support with the use of this program that you can just map it to everything and that gives you full support. Or maybe you want to play a game like Valorant. Maybe you just love shooting games, but your inner console kid just can't get used to keyboard and mouse. Well, let me tell you, Valorant, from what I know, has no controller support yet. Within this program, you'll get 100% support because it just acts as you're using a keyboard, but your controller's telling your keyboard what to do. So look into getting REWASD. If you want, in the description of this video, I have a basic package, or maybe you're someone who wants the full package, where you can get extra configurations, you can get full controller advanced mapping support, or you can even get things like aim assist to help you shoot. Within that, thank you REWASD for sponsoring this video, let's get back to it. So let's get into the video, and I want to cover the Kaya's brooches now. To start off, they are part of your jewelry, just like anything else. 
and there will be three different types. I currently have the Kaya Savagey brooch, and we'll go over the differences of these brooches, but first I want to compare this one to the Shadow Hunter brooch. As you can see, I've kept both just because I'm a hoarder, I like to keep stuff, and who knows, maybe one day I'll have to combine it. I don't know, they've done that before. So, within that, it's the standard rolls, just like any brooch. You have the two rolls you keep, and then the two rolls you pick. You can etch it. The attack modifier on the Kayas is 400, where the Shadow Hunter is. Shadow Hunter, I apologize, is 381. The rolls are basically the same. They are the same. The next thing that changes is actually the active skill. And you can see the Shadow Hunter Brooch gives 40 power, 40 crit, increased healing by 12, attack speed by 9, increased HP by 12, and you take 6% less damage. But here's the key thing it only lasts for 20 seconds. Whereas the Kaya's Brooch, if you go to the bottom, it lasts, or at the top of it, it lasts for 25 seconds. So that 5 extra seconds is really crucial. And Warriors alone. Just to give an example, our Deadly Gamble lasts for 24 seconds. So now my brooch can last my whole DG instead of me missing some. So this is key. That extra five seconds might not seem like a lot. It's massive. As well as the increased power is 45. The crit rate is the same. This will change depending what brooch you pick. This skill right here at this point does change. The HP is still 12 as it was before. The let's see. The attack speed is now 12. It was 9, so you get an additional 3. The HP is also 12, and the damage taken is 6. So basically, it's a very similar, the same. The only major difference is whether if you get more power, more attack speed, more crit, it depends on which brute you take. The savagery is what I would suggest for most people to take for PvE. PvP, different story, I know nothing about it. Maybe it's the same, I don't even know if it activates in PvP. That might be something you can ask Rita, I know Rita is big into PvP, and maybe he knows. But um, I can say, for PvE purposes, Kaya's Savagery Brooch is the best unless, for whatever reason, you're a class that can't make your crit factor and you need the extra 5 crit. And what I mean by that is when we come over to our Valkyrie Federation coins, there's the Kaya's Adam. no, 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 the Kaya's Splendor Brooch that raises your crit by 50 instead of 40. So you get an additional 10 crit with this brooch. That is the only major difference between this brooch and the savagery is the 5 power versus the 10 crit. Again, I highly suggest this brooch because most people already have their crit factor and now at Bahara's crit being reduced, I don't think there's a point of the splendor. The only thing I can see in the future, I have not talked to the devs, I have no clue, don't take my word, this is just a get out a, a game theory is maybe one day we'll need all three of these to craft an ultimate kaya's bridge now i don't don't go buying all three and then yelling at me in three years from now that they never did it because i have no clue but it's not something i can't see them not doing all right down the road just food for thought all right the adamant's brooch um it's basically the same as the shadow hunter brooch except for it gives more attack speed they all give the 12 instead of nine and it gives more hp so maybe for healers you might want this i don't know i don't see a reason to have 25 seconds of extra max hp Maybe for PvP, when you see a bunch of people coming running at you in like Freywind's Canyon or something, this could be ideal. I don't know. Again, I don't PvP. I can't really see any reason to use this, but 
like I said, I've given my philosophies on these brooches. And so, you might be wondering, dang Terra, 2,000, 2,000 coins to get a brooch is a lot. It is. Especially, you can see I only have 300. Now, this is the part where I want to get into explaining how to get the Federation coins. For anyone who doesn't know, you just clear content. Every time you clear something like Bahar, you get 5 coins. You complete Velik Sanctuary Heart, you get 5 coins. Hey, if you're only able to run LK, just keep doing your LK and RGs and eventually you will get there. It's not meant to be something you get in a day. It's not something you're meant to be get in a week. It took me maybe 4 weeks, give or take. And I believe Rita said in his video he grinded nonstop for 23 days, and that's how long it took him. So I really love the devs for making something like this. I think it's cool that we have materials that can't just be got in a week. And I think as most MMOs, you're not meant to be mid max in a day. So I respect the grind. Now you might be wondering, how did Rita get it in 23 days? Well, basically, Rita did what anyone should do. He ran his Bahars, then Velik Sanctuary. At this time, AHM was instance match only, and I believe he did his Grottos, which gave four coins, and he would do AQ, which gave four coins, and then if he couldn't instance match AA, he would run RM instead. RM normal which gave three coins and he just burned it so quickly that you know he capped out all of his vanguards every day to get the max amount of coins and the biggest thing he said was he'd reset his Bahar he tried to run two sets of Bahar and if he couldn't then he finished out anything left over with either AA or RM depending on AAHM's cues so nowadays the grind would be again if you have Bahar reset scrolls and you can run Bahar, you would want to do two sets of Bahar, Velik Sanctuary, AA, RK. Those will give you basically 15 vanguards done, which leaves you with one extra vanguard that you could go into anything that gives four tokens. Um, probably looking at doing Red Refuge hard or LK hard. And at that point, that's like equivalent of RM. Not only once a week do you get your 10 coins from the weekly, but I believe daily bonus two gives five, daily bonus three either gives five or 10. So you make tons of coins. Now, like I said, that was Rita's method with resetting Bahar and the selection. Realistically, it doesn't matter unless you wanna get it as soon as possible. The most amount of coins you can get is by doing as many Bahar sets a day that you can. If you're with a group that can wake up at like 8 in the morning and run a Bahar set, reset, run another Bahar set, wait 5 hours, reset, run a third Bahar set, I want to say with reset scrolls you can probably do 4 Bahars in one day, which you can do the math four sets times three times five of that's how many coins you get literally you can't beat that amount of coins and then finish off with velik sanctuary you are getting mid max coins but that that comes to resetting bahar so much that's just you know not worth now there is one final place that you can go to get coins and this was added after Rita and I got our brooches. Uh, basically, a lot of people who at the end got their brooches, this was added. And that is that you can go to Velika. And there is a shopkeeper. I've mentioned this keeper in a previous video when I updated and talked about all the shops, all the changes to the game that came with the last update. And basically it is Mia. For anyone who doesn't remember or maybe you're new to the channel and you haven't seen that video, I highly suggest going over because a lot of the changes are really really useful 
especially if you're not mid max if you're not at end game knowing about these shops is very useful as they have a lot of goodies especially for new players basically you come over to here in velka and you talk to mia now i want to put a warning that i didn't put in the last video and i've had people come to me going hey how did you talk to her like i can't talk to her you have to complete your the federation quest line if you don't have that started you need to go down this hallway down here and you gotta go down and talk to seer and pick up the quest line if you're wondering i don't think i can fully show it as it's completed yeah yeah i'd have to go into a completed quest and that's not an oh no for federation so you would need to complete enemies of foreign and domestic basically again you'll go down you'll talk to seer you'll then do your guardian legion quest line which is very simple you just complete a guardian legion mission by the way don't be stubborn just complete it you need those points to be able to buy this anyway and then you'll be able to talk to one two and three and then come to mia and then you can buy these crates um for those that are wondering what's in the crates i'll buy four just to show uh, again i did this in the previous video as well you can get either golden plates silver plates uh my game froze that's cute rubies stigma shards so gems stigma shards and you do have a chance of getting the federation coins from those so i believe what friends and i did the math was that if you complete all your guardian legions do all 40 boxes you'll get 10,000 points which means you can buy about 10 of these boxes a little more than 10 close to 12 13 per character guardian legion points are very simple if you have a strong enough character just do your sglm if you have a character that's not so strong and you think that'll take longer if you're really good at the flight skill missions or the flying skill missions you can get about six to eight boxes maybe ten so you'll only have to do four flying four to five flying missions and then you're capped out for the day so basically this grind has gotten a lot better and that is the kaios breaches like I said, I do highly suggest this method for anyone who's not able to clear the higher dungeons. Once you clear your dungeons for the day, or even if you're just bored waiting for a group to fill, you can do your Guardian Legion missions. I highly, highly support and suggest doing them. Um, my opinion is that you got nothing else to do. You're waiting. Might as well do them. I mean... You know, you can you can complete those missions and get your stigma shards from them. They're just overall a good thing to do. This is a good shop. And like I said, that's another way to farm the Kaya's brooch. So just to show it again, here's the Kaya Savagery brooch. Again, I highly suggest this one. You can do whatever you want. Uh, for those wondering, does it do an animation? No. No, it does not. I know Rita was very upset about that, so maybe they'll uh, add one later, but that's about it, y'all. Um, hope you liked this video. If you have, go ahead and hit that like button. If you found your way to this channel and you're not subscribed, please do so as we have a lot of really fantastic, amazing content coming out very, very soon. I got a lot of cool stuff in the works that I will be bringing to attention in the near future. As well as there is a current goal for a 500. When we hit 500 subs, I will be doing a personalized warrior tank guide. I know a lot of people have been asking for that. So let's push the 500. Um, I have a 400 goal that doesn't really involve Terra console, but it might be changing to involve Terra console. We'll see what the future entails with that whole mess of stuff going on. It's just not important. Um, and yeah, again, huge shout out to Rita. 
fantastic work. And please, if you've made it this far, go give his video a like. Go, go, go. Support him too. He's super chill. Alright, that's about it. I hope to see y'all on Aboria Gamers.